So glad that each of you all are here this morning and gathering on this Sunday morning for worship here. And I would say at White Oak Pond, because White Oak Pond is all about those that have gathered. The church has always been made up of the people. And so when the people gather, when God's people gather, whether it be in that historic sanctuary at the corner of Goggins and um, Barnes Mill Road, or whether we gather in front of monitors, computer screens, phones, whatever it might be, we gather as the people of God, and that is where White Oak Pond is. We are so glad that you've chosen this as your place of worship this morning. And so as we begin today, I hope that you can enjoy a little bit of um, a little bit of calm, be able to take a deep breath, but also recognize that God is present in this moment, and God is inviting you in to open your eyes and see that God continues to be resurrected each and every day. With each rising of the sun, we see God's beauty in this world in powerful ways. Let us enter into worship this morning. Here is a miracle. Do you see it? Rising from the richness of the fertile ground, a tiny green blade, the natural world alive. Here is a miracle. Do you feel it? Rising within your being, each breath a gift for this moment, alive. Here is a miracle. Can you believe it? Rising even now in our precarious, precious world, Jesus the Christ, our hope, alive. We said this last week, but I remind you each and every Sunday, we say Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. And now I'd invite Bill and Margaret Bingham to share in our call to worship this morning. Well, good morning to all and uh, on this Easter season, may we celebrate that Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. Though we find ourselves isolated in homes, apartments, and residential places, yet we would listen to the birds singing, reminding us that the whole creation rejoices in the love of our God. And though we cannot reach out and touch our 
friends and neighbors, we would rejoice that Jesus is in our midst, holding out our hands of grace and hope to us. Though we have to stand at a safe distance from others, whispering hello through masks, we know that the Spirit is all around us, breathing peace on us in these moments, surrounding us with grace and hope. Thank you so much. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put the words up, and Laura is going to play for us today. There's going to be a short introduction, and then um, I'm going to try and lead the singing. And, uh, and But this is your chance to sing wherever you are. Now, you might worry, well, I don't have the best voice. If you mute, mute your, your microphone, you can sing as loud as you, and as out of key as you want. Just enjoy making a joyful noise to the Lord this morning. important that we gather each and every week and we wonder and we also share where we have seen God this week. One of the things that I love is that many have shared with me um, images over the last few weeks of places that have meant something to them, of places where they have seen God. These were a few shared by the Kirbys on one of their hikes. And you can see God's beauty and the springing forth of this new season when you're outside. Now, some people got all excited a few weeks ago when it got warm and began to plant things, and maybe you've had to cover them up. But I will tell you that the dandelions are still growing strong in my front yard, and things are still beginning to bloom. I can even tell you that when I go outside and I see this thin film of, um, this thin film of yellow all over things, um, that the world is breaking forth still. So I would ask, are there other places where you all have seen God this last week? Um, and you can do this, remember you can let me know by raising your hand or also um, you can put, um, you can uh, put a little reaction or something down there, raise your hand and let me know, and I'll look through and, and we'll recognize you. You can share where you've seen God. Oh, Cynthia, yeah. There, I've unmuted you. I just want to thank everyone for having this forum for me last week. Um, I don't know if you noticed, Chad, but my daughter, Jean Ellen, and my son, John, were both on the call. That's the first time I think I've had Easter with my children in probably over a decade. My daughter's um, 34 and my son's 28. He lives in San Francisco and my daughter lives in New York. So that was a real thrill for me. So um, thank you all for allowing us to share this forum. That is terrific. How are they doing up there? Everybody's doing great. Um, so far healthy. John, of course, in San Francisco was one of the first to shelter in place and New York was not long after. So they've been in shelter in place for over three weeks. And, um, you know, like I said, so far so good. In New York, it's, it's just rampant. And um, so when they go out, they Clorox everything when they come in from the grocery and that kind of thing, go out very little. Um, they have started an Instagram with um, making new cocktails every night. So I, I hope this won't be a long-term thing, but anyway, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> if you wanna go to Embittered Spirits, that's my daughter and son-in-law's website. Um, Chad married my daughter in, last October and my son last November. And um, for you all that don't know me, I am the one that introduced Chad to Melissa. 
That's right. That's right. So it's, uh, um, it, it was great to have um, them on and, and also to have John on a few weeks ago. Those are, it's been a neat thing to be able to share this with so many people from around the country. And uh, so grateful to have that. Thank you for sharing that. Do we have anybody else that, um, that, needs, that had a place where they've seen God this last week? Okay, Marjorie. You gotta un let's see, I'm trying to un unmute yourself there. There you go. I got it. Um, my family has been following um, my cousin who had a, a massive heart attack. And I've never seen people come together like we are over this. The, the prayers and the texts and the social media and all those things are just full of of prayers and thanksgiving and connectedness that you know we don't see very often and i'm thankful for that i think god's hand was in that for sure thank Wonderful. you thank you so much anyone else i'm going to scroll up oh, karen go ahead you'll have to unmute yourself there there how's that there you go. Oh, good. I'm still learning how to work this computer stuff. I saw God in some flowers, buds, like, like bulbs that I got from Margaret last year. They're growing really well right now in a pot, and I'm going to plant them in the ground pretty soon. So I thought that was pretty nice. Well, terrific. Thank you. All right, Ben, go ahead. I have a dear friend that has been sending a different picture of uh, spring flowers. He lives in in uh, Mississippi on the Gulf Coast, so he gets a lot of flowers. And uh, he's, he had some comment about each one uh, related to uh, God being visible in, in nature. And I've seen God there myself. Thank you so much for sharing that. Definitely, definitely. All right. Anyone else have a, a, oh, there we go, Rissa. Um, Where have you seen God this week? Um, that I had a great Easter. Say that again. I had a great Easter. I had a great Easter. Do you do? <laughs> well that's it's so good to hear that thank you for sharing that with us all right anyone else any others out there okay and uh see if i can margaret has one oh, okay go ahead margaret I'm not sure if we really want to classify it this way, but those snow showers earlier in the week were something else. <laughs> and that the flowers have survived, basically. <laughs> God is good. Yes, yes. Those are, um, it, was, it was definitely God. I could definitely see God in that, so. Oh, yes, Georgiana, go ahead. I uh, opened my mailbox and there were two sweet little cards from my grandbabies. Yeah. Little drawings and little I love you grandma and just, just made my whole week. Yeah. Oh, that's terrific. Such sweet things. And Catherine, yes, go ahead. Yes, last Sunday I put my niece on the prayers list because she had the virus and was in intensive care. They feel all the prayers were responsible for her being able to come home this week. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. And what was her name? Her name was Jennifer Dininger. Okay. So we thank, thank everyone for their prayers. Thank you so much for sharing that. I think, so I think that Rissa, did, Rissa, did you say that you had a great Easter? Is that what you were sharing? Oh, terrific. Okay. Thank you so much. I love that. 
sometimes this is it's a terrific uh, medium but sometimes it just doesn't always come right across so thank you all right that is it's important that we continue to see that where we see um where we see god it's important to continue to name that and to share that whether it be an interaction across a fence with our neighbors or just sharing a a nod to someone as we're out on our walks um, those are important things to do because it's in, in these times, um, sometimes you can, be, you can feel the pressure on you. You can feel that we're getting a little stir crazy. There are folks that are just um, antsy to get back to what we called normal. And what I think that it's important to do is to name that where we are right now, God is present. And that, you know, the, the story that I heard just the other day that um, somebody brought up was this idea of, of kind of liberation from um, from the people that uh, for God's people, and one of the things that's interesting is when the Israelites went out of Egypt, and um, they kept saying, you know, why would God lead us out here into these places just for us to die? And there was a hopelessness that that happened, even though they were away from where they they were, and so. The most important thing to continue to do throughout this whole thing to help with our own kind of um, ability to see the um, to see the joy in this is to be able to name where God is and to recognize that God has not abandoned us. And so um, it's good to, that we share these joys and share these places where we have seen God each and every week. So as we um, as we move forward, we go to a time of prayer. So this is a place where if you want to, you can share, um, you can share prayer requests in that chat box that's there. Um, you can um, type those in and so that I can see those. Um, and that way I can put those on our prayer list. I'll just remind you of a few of the ones that we have. We continue to be grateful. And also for those people that are working on the front line, those doctors and nurses, those people like Sandra and Casey and, and um, so many others that are um, Trenton and, and folks that are first responders that are um, helping to care for people with this illness and also who are being on call to help to continue to keep us safe and healthy. We continue to pray for those that are dealing with the virus. We're grateful whenever we hear of people like Jennifer who've come off of ventilators or have gotten better. And yet we still know that there are those who are struggling. And we still do know names each and every day that come out of those who have passed away. And so we're remembering their families during this time. It's so great to see people like Jean on the call and to know that she's doing so well and running around without her walker. That's great. We're grateful for that. But we also continue to remember Lyle Adams with his health concerns. We continue to remember Teresa Tope's sister, Phyllis. She's dealing with respiratory issues, not associated with the virus, but is still dealing with those issues. Um, Ed Rush, his uncle, his name's Dan, and he's in Illinois. He's dealing with an issue right now um, that's put him on a ventilator that's not associated with the, the virus, but he's dealing with that. We pray for him. We continue to be grateful for Ben Faulkner, who is Marjorie's cousin. He's improving each and every day, even though he had his coronary event a little over a week ago. Each and every week, we remember Matthew George and Heidi Franks. Um, one, of our, um, one of our teachers on this um, has a student named Liam who has been struggling in Cincinnati. And so we continue to remember him and his family. We continue to remember Tammy Newman, who's recovering from cancer surgery, Ron Allen, who's dealing with cancer, as well as Karen Younger's friend, Jack, who's out in California, who has been having the health issues, and we've been praying for him for a while. And again, we're grateful for cards, for moments in nature that nurture us. Are there any others that we need to pray for this time? Just again, raise your hand or let me know if we need to add somebody to the list. Anybody? You have oh, yes. You have some in the chat box too, hon. Okay, thanks. 
Yes, uh, go ahead. I had somebody raise their hand. Yes, I got you. Yes. Um, I, I, I had put it in the chat box, but uh, it was for a, a family and then I don't even think the name has been released yet, but who has lost a son and a brother this morning in a car wreck. Okay. So sorry to hear that. So there was a loss of life in a car accident just this morning. And so we'll pray for um, a son and a brother who uh, passed away that day. Um, Dad, I tried to, this is Marcy, I tried to send you a couple things. And for some reason, I don't think it went. Um, Julia Ramey broke her shoulder. She fell and broke her shoulder. And okay. uh, Ruby Cosby also fell and broke her hip. And these are two ladies that um, are at Morning Point. They were there when mom was there. And um, so they're recovering Julia as well Ray as they can. And, and Ruby Cosby. Um, Ruby Cosby, yeah. And then um, I also do know that um, Melissa's uncle, um, her uncle Tommy, passed away this last week. And so we pray for her family, especially her mom, um, during this difficult time. And um, my aunt um, fell and broke her hip while she was out the other day, and so she had surgery yesterday. That's my Aunt Barbara down in Augusta, Georgia. And so uh, we continue to remember her and, um, and others who are going through those things when you have to go into the hospital for something and, and there's fear because of all the other stuff that's going on. And so, um, Life does continue, and there is um, there are scary things. We're grateful to hear also that Jeff, did, um, who had been diagnosed with the virus, came off his ventilator, um, and so that's after three weeks, and so we're grateful to hear that. Um, all right, and a wonderful Easter. Any others that I have missed? All right. Um, I want to share... Um, a video with you all um, from our um, from our general minister and president, and um, she is talking a little bit on here about how she's inviting us to be in a spirit of prayer um, this week. And so I'm going to share this first before we begin our prayer time right now. Hello, disciples. Happy Eastertide. I was so grateful to be able to share with so many of you as we celebrated this Easter unlike any that we've ever experienced in our lifetimes. But the power of the resurrection and new life in Christ was proclaimed. Thanks be to God. Well, we've been in this sheltering at home season for a little more than a month now, and I just want to check in on you. How are you? We all recognize that we're dealing with a lot right now. Many of us are getting stir crazy and the anxiety of not knowing when this is going to end is starting to take its toll. Many of us are finding that loved ones and friends are contracting the COVID-19 virus and sadly too many of us are losing loved ones to the virus. Experts tell us that it's okay to recognize and acknowledge that we're dealing with a lot it's okay to take time for rest. It's okay to lament, to grieve. It's okay to laugh. I've been scheduling time for myself, away from the Zoom screens, time for rest, and I've begun a 40-day prayer retreat to deepen my own spiritual discipline. I believe that we can ask God for lots of things, but we also need to sit still and experience the presence of God, to pause, breathe, and feel God's presence. I invite you to join me not only in taking a praise break, but spending some time each day to allow the presence of God to simply envelop you. I know that if you ask God to show up, God will. Be well, be safe, be gentle with yourself. As Psalm 16 tells us, in the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. God bless you. I'm grateful for the leadership that um, Reverend Terry Hordo that Owens has been providing during this time. Um, she actually um, 
made available a sermon that she preached um, this last week for Easter Sunday. And many churches, I think, they, um, they downloaded that and shared that, that whole sermon. If you want to check that out, you can find that on YouTube. And, um, and so, but we're grateful for the challenges that she gives us of being still and lifting up the joys and yet also being in a spirit of prayer each and every day. So grateful for that. At this time, let us join our hearts and minds in prayer and we can pause for a minute. Almighty and life-giving God, you have reminded us of your grace and peace and yes, your creative spirit this last week. We gathered this last Sunday and celebrated the ways that you raised up Jesus to new life, to new understandings, and you showed us that you are more powerful than death. You showed us that your love cannot be contained, and we, and we celebrated on Easter Sunday. And then this week, we continued to see you in powerful ways in nature, and bulbs that we were planting and that are beginning to come up, flowers around, the grass is growing, and maybe we even had to mow our lawn. And then we were reminded of the breadth of your creation when the snowflakes began to fall. And we wondered how great and awesome this world is. God, we have been given hope each and every day with cards that have come, connections that happen over distances. We're so grateful to be able to FaceTime and, and see family members even while we shelter in place. And we're grateful. We're grateful for phone calls that nurture us and remind us that there are those out there who are lifting us in prayer each and every day and that are just thinking and just can't wait to be able to be back together. And still, God, we're grateful for those that are continuing to be safe, continuing to stop the spread of this horrendous vi virus. We're grateful for the frontline workers that continue to serve and protect and help care for those who are going through these difficult times, whether it be surgeries that happen for people like Barbara, those that are continuing to recover, continuing to get better, or just dealing with the ins and outs of illnesses. We're thinking about Ruby and Julia and Dan and Jennifer and Jeff and Lyle and Phyllis, Ben, Matthew, Heidi, Liam, Tammy, Ron, and Jack. We're thinking of those people who are going through these difficult times and the people that care for them. We lift up their names, O Lord, today because we know that each name represents a life that is important. There are so many challenges, O Lord, and so we need you to be with us. You have promised that you will be with us in all places and all times. We ask that you continue to show us your face each and every day to help give us the hope that we need. And for those, O oh Lord, that are going through difficult times and the loss of life, we think about those who have just lost family members to a horrible car accident. And we're thinking about the family of Tommy as they grieve his passing and as they mourn this fact that they will not be able to see this person in the same way again. God, you reminded us that your love is never ending. You reminded us through Jesus' words that you will always be with us and you will, we will never be left alone. Give us the confidence and the strength this week to live out lives of purpose and meaning as we continue to reach out with your love as we continue to share your hope in this world. It's in Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. As we come together this week,
One of the ways that we continue to see God is in the gift of music. And so this week, we have someone that has brought their gift to share with us this week. And Emory has a gift to share this morning. I've been staring at the edge of the water long as I can remember, never really knowing why. I wish I could be the perfect daughter, but I come back to the water no matter how hard I try. Every turn I take, every trail I track, every path I make, every road leads back to the place I know where I cannot go, where I long to be. See the line where the sky meets the sea, it calls me, and no one knows how far it goes. If the wind of my sail on the sea stays behind me, one day I'll know. If I go, there's just no telling how far I'll go. I know everybody on this island seems so happy from this island. Everything is by design. I know everybody on this island has a role on this island, so maybe I can roll with mine. I can lead with pride, I can make us strong, I'll be satisfied if I play along. But the voice inside sings a different song, what is wrong with me? See the line as it shines on the sea. It's blinding, but no one knows how deep it goes. And it seems like it's calling them to me, so come find me. And let me know what's beyond that line, how I cross that line. See the line where the sky meets the sea, it calls me. But no one knows how far it goes. And the wind of my sail on the sea stays behind me. And they all know how far I'll go. Thank you so much, Emery. Appreciate you sharing your gifts with us this week. All right, Juliana, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? There you go. Can you share with us our scripture from the day? Yes, I can. Thanks. Our first reading is from Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble, in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another god multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out, or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also, my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol or let your faithful one see the pit. You show me the path of life. 
In your presence, there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Our second reading is from John chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, he was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nail in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nail um, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hand. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. Here ends the reading. Thank you so much, Juliana. Really appreciate you sharing in our scripture this morning. So many of you may have seen that there are people putting up like pictures of themselves from when they were seniors in high school to stand in solidarity with the seniors that are in high school today that are missing out on a lot of the last year of senior things. I've seen a lot of different stuff out there. Like I said, there's a lot of people that have put up pictures maybe of their senior, um, their year, their senior portraits. There are folks that have shared stories about when they were seniors, about how much their prom you know, sucked really, you know, and uh, how about how horrible it was, or maybe that they just wished that they didn't even have to go through that senior year again. And, and that even though the seniors of today were missing out on things, it really wasn't that big of a deal. I've seen all kinds of things out there, people trying to help these seniors in high school go through this time. Almost, and sometimes they're trying to say, hey, we understand what you're going through. Sometimes we say, you know, it's not really that big of a deal, but there are a lot of folks out there who are trying to give them advice. The reality of it is, is that we're all missing something. I mean, Easter is one of my favorite times of the year. I spend time thinking about it from back before, um, before Advent and thinking about what it is that we could do, what word might be able to be said. I even find different ties and things to prepare myself for Easter Sunday. Even around here, the girls find specific dresses that they might like to wear on that day. We didn't get to do that this year in the same way. Maybe you've missed a trip. I've already missed one thing that I was supposed to go off for a conference. Of course, it was in Des Moines, Iowa. I don't know how exciting Des Moines, Iowa is in April, but it was gonna be a chance to gather with friends and colleagues. 
and think about ministry in new ways. People have had trips canceled. Maybe you're stuck someplace and can't get back home. Whatever it might be, we've all missed something. We have all are at home wondering when this is going to be over and when we can get back to the things that we love and care about. We all want something. And really, there's, some, there's that current that goes underneath the scripture today of what it is that Thomas wants. Now, Thomas has been given a bad rap for so many years. In fact, most people, if I would have told you that we're going to be dealing with this scripture today, most of you would have maybe said, this is that story about doubting Thomas, right? That's how we've labeled him, doubting Thomas. Well, the theologians out there are fighting hard to save Thomas. They've dug deep into the, the Greek back there, and they said, listen, it's not, it's not really that he's doubting, okay? In fact, if we look at that, that word that they're translating, it's not actually the word of doubt. It's the opposite of belief. The opposite of belief. Well, that does make it sound a little bit better, but it still doesn't change the fact that Thomas wants to see the Lord. In fact, he's so adamant about it that he missed out that he demands, I don't just want to see Jesus. I want to feel the holes. I want to stick my hand in the side. He is so frustrated with missing Jesus that there's almost an anger inside of this. And can we blame him? When we miss out on stuff, it wells up inside of us. There's an anger, a frustration, this, this feeling that something has to be done, that this has to be made right. And we come up with ways to show exactly how much we feel inside that we are getting shorted. What's interesting about this is there are all kinds of people getting shorted in this story. And one of the ways is, is that Mary herself gets shorted. Now, this story is from the Gospel of John, and last week we read the scripture from the Gospel of Matthew. Each gospel tells the story a little bit of a different way. The, the story of the risen Christ in uh, the Easter story um, in John is told a little bit different. In this one, this is the story where Jesus meets with Mary, and she mistakes him from the gardener. And <clears throat> when they're finished, Jesus sends Mary and says, Go and tell Adelphoi that I will come. Go tell them. And in all the scriptures, it's translated as go tell my brothers. Even the NRSV, which is the newest one that we have, and it's most kind of true to the Greek, translates it as brothers. But the reality is, is that the translation is, is it means brothers and sisters. And in all kinds of places, it's translated as both brothers and sisters. So when we gather, when we hear that, that, that Jesus, brothers and sisters, these people have gathered in a locked room, <clears throat> it's not just men. It's all of Jesus' disciples, those followers, those people who are trying to learn more about God through him that have gathered. So I need us to kind of open ourselves up and understand that not just Thomas is getting shorted here. There were women present in that room as well. And they're a lot of times just ignored in the story. But they've gathered. They've gathered in this locked room for fear, it says. For fear they have come together. And I don't know exactly what they were doing, if they were sharing stories, if Mary was telling them exactly what had happened. We don't know if it was Peter and the beloved disciple that were sharing their story of how they ran to the tomb. 
We don't know who was gathered, but we do know. We do know that Thomas missed out. And it's there in that locked room that Jesus comes to them. And Jesus stands with them. And they get a sense that Jesus has returned, but in a very new way. This is not just a resuscitated body. This is a Jesus that now is beyond this physical limitations. Jesus comes through locked doors. Jesus will not stop by small imaginations. Jesus is larger than just what we can imagine. Jesus meets us wherever we are. This is another Easter story that is outside of a tomb. This is an Easter story that meets us when we are locked away, thinking, thinking that we have sequestered ourselves. Jesus is present there as well. And that is an Easter message that if you're not listening right now from your home, in your room, that the doors are locked, if you're not hearing that, it's time to wake up and see that Jesus meets us where we are each and every day. And it's time to open our eyes and see that. And still Thomas wasn't there. He missed out. In fact, can you imagine running the disciples running into Jesus, Peter and the beloved disciple and Mary, maybe out in the market, and they run up and they're like, dude, where were you? Well, you know, I had to go and walk my dog or something else. I had to feed the sheep. But they're like, Thomas, you missed it. Jesus came to visit. Thomas was like, no, no way. Yeah, yeah, Jesus came, and he talked to us, and he spent time with us. Thomas was like, dude, I missed it. I have no clue why Thomas is kind of from the valley in my story, or why he's a surfer dude. I have no clue. But for some reason in my mind, that's who Thomas is. But he missed out. And he was frustrated. And he was angry. But it was funny, he didn't miss the next time that they got together. He was there in that room. And this time Jesus comes again. Because remember, Jesus meets us where we are. And the thing about it is, is that Jesus could have gotten upset with Thomas. He could have been like, Thomas, you know who I am. You spent all this time with me. I reminded you day in and day out of God's love and about how I was going to prepare a place for you and I would always be there for you. He could have said that. But instead, Jesus opens his hands, opens his arms, And says, here I am, Thomas. Now, here's where you get to fill in the the part that we don't always know about. Because that is what scripture is all about. It's about storytelling. And so you could fill in this next piece of the puzzle. Because we're not told whether Thomas actually touches Jesus' hands or whether he actually sticks his hand inside the wound that's still on Jesus. We don't know if he does. And we don't know how he spoke those words to Thomas. But whatever happens, whatever way Jesus shares this presence with Thomas, it humbles him to a place of worshiping Jesus. And he shares, my Lord and my God. 
And Jesus reminds him, and he says, Thomas, Thomas, don't be someone of unbelief. Be a person of belief. Now, most of us think about belief as this static understanding, like it's something that we know inside of our head. It's a, a fact that we can regurgitate. When was the Battle of 1812? Let me think. I believe it was in 1812. But that's not the way that it is in the Gospel of John. If you guys remember a few weeks back, we were talking about this. The Gospel of John is all about believing is a relationship. It's an action. It's not a static piece of fact or something that engages in here. It's something that is in part of our whole body. It's us being friends. It's us being a brother, a sister, just being there for somebody else. It's a relationship. And so what Jesus is saying is, listen, relationship is what this is about. Don't just run away from me and stop being in relationship just because you can't see me. Jesus invites the disciples to continue to be in relationship from here on out. And here, here is something that's interesting. The first time that the disciples gathered, if you notice, it said they gathered in a locked room. They shut the door and they bolted the door. They kept things closed in, protecting themselves from the things that they feared inside. But that second time they came together, the door wasn't locked. The second time, the second time, maybe they were learning a little bit more about what it meant to be in relationship. Maybe, maybe they realized that living an abundant life of love and compassion and grace, forgiveness and freedom cannot happen behind a locked door or behind a locked heart. It happens when we open ourselves up to the world. And yes, when we open ourselves up to the world, we are going to be hurt. We are going to miss out on things, and it's going to be, it's going to be hard. The question is, how can we reach out? in the midst of that pain, in the midst of that frustration, in the midst of that anger, and also in the midst of that hopelessness, how can we reach out with God's hope and God's love to others? How can we receive that from other people, from the cards that we receive, from the phone calls that we receive? How can we reach out and continue to show love and receive that love? I do believe do believe that that means living in relationship with God, living as Easter people each and every day. The scripture adds up, finishes up, and it says, I don't know if you caught this or not, there were many other things that happened that were not written in this book. But these were written that we might continue to believe. There are other things that we're going to miss out on. Other stories, other experiences that we will miss. But here's the thing. Let us always continue to move forward in relationship with God, but also as open people to the relationship with others as we can be Jesus' hands and feet in this world. May we go with courage. May we go with strength. 
but may we also go with compassion and love in our hearts each and every day. Amen. Your offering is how you share yourself. It's not just about, um, it's not just about money. If it were that easy, then, then we could put a price tag on it. It's so much larger than that. It is about sharing what we've been given with the world. I am so glad to see that and to hear that people are sending out cards to our members. It is a powerful, powerful ministry. It's a powerful way of sharing who you are to this world. And what an incredible offering that is. I've continued to hear ways in which people have reached out and have shared something of themselves. I've heard that people have gathered extra groceries and dropped them off at God's outreach. People in the church have reached out and have written a check and sent it into the church. And that is wonderful things because that helps continue to make the ministries available to this congregation. And one of the things that we're doing is we're now working with Madison County, um, with the, uh, the school system, to try and help provide, um, if we can possibly, be a contact place for folks to pick up meals for children to pick up meals um, at the church. That's a way that we're continuing to reach out and to offer up the church and its parking lot so that people can find food during this time. Many of you also have shared ways in which you have brought about joy by either beautifying something or reaching out with a phone call or just being there for someone. And we're grateful for that. These are the ways that we share in the offerings that we have. At this time, I would invite you to think about ways that you will share what you have with the world. Let us offer up this prayer for our gifts. May the gifts we offer be used to open doors closed to strangers hands shut tight against generous giving, and hearts frozen by fears of the unknown. May these offerings be multiplied and sharing and share God's love each and every day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we come to this time of communion, I would invite you to go and to, um, if you need to send somebody into the kitchen, to gather and to get your bread and your cup. One of the things that I heard the other day that was quoted was um, Martin Luther, who was a writer back in the 1400s. And he was a pastor during the plague. And what was interesting is that he said that we should continue to preach the gospel even in the midst of this horrific, horrific disease. Fascinating enough, we still have some of his writings. And he said that we are to preach peace within this time, not peace from it. That the challenge always is this, is to see the peace that exists right now. Not to get us away from this time, but that peace exists, that Jesus is with us through the good and through the bad. And that is what this meal reminds us. That we received this first story of Jesus with his disciples, with those followers, with those men and women in that upper room, even in the midst of this time of pain for him, he comes to them and shares this special meal. 
And remember, he gathered and he took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to each of them and he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took a cup and after giving thanks, he poured it out. And he said, this cup is a new covenant. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, remember you remember Jesus and the way he showed God's love each and every day in his ministry, in his meals, in his death, and also in his resurrection until we share it with him again. Let us now spend the time in communion. Cindy, can you offer up our prayer at this time? God, we invoke your spirit wherever we are this day. As we worship together, remind us of the gift of this meal, of what we can find at this table. Help us to open ourselves to your love so that others will see you in what we do. Be with us, guide us, bring us together again soon. In Jesus' name, amen.
I would invite you to join with me in the saying of our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It has been so good to be with you all this Sunday morning. It is such a joy to be able to see folks' faces and to be able to hear voices. So grateful for the Binghams and for Juliana and also for Cindy for sharing in worship leadership, as well as for Emery for sharing her gift of music and sharing a story about uh, the song about stepping out. Many of the kids understand that story about going places that are scary, and I thought it was a beautiful one to be able to share on this day. And so I invite you as we go forth from this place, go in peace but also go forth knowing that God loves you so very much and God comes to you wherever you are and receives you. And God just is longing for a relationship. Go in peace this day. So good to see you all. Amen. It is so good to see you. If, uh...